Okay, I got asked the other day what would be my top rotator cuff exercise to give to patients. Now, I don't have one, I have quite a lot, but if I could narrow it down, I'd narrow it down to four, and they're not necessarily the top four or the best four, but they're my four favorite, especially that I've been through a rotator cuff surgery. So at the end of that program, I've come up with sort of four exercises that I still keep doing to work on deficits. Now, the reason why they're the top four is they really work on the final end stage of your, your strengthening of your rotator cuff, but also at the start. So they're a really good tool to have all the way through. Now, this is definitely focused a little bit on supraspinatus because that is the most common injured or repaired rotator cuff, so we're focusing on that. So first one I like doing, and I'll do these in order, is your scapular press. Now, there's many options for the scapular press. You can do it on the wall to start off with if you want to. You can do it with a band for load. If I was gonna give you the top one, what I'd do is work on the stability component with a ball. Now, the reason that is, is when you're doing a four point, meaning it's sort of three point, right? But you're in four point. If you take one hand away and you have to then balance on that, the ball gives you the stability component for the glenohumeral joint. And what helps with stability? That's your rotator cuff. So when you do it on the floor, just like this, you're working on your serratus, okay? When you do it with a ball, you've got a bit more rotator cuff with your serratus. So it's a bit of a double whammy. So having this here, I can then work on my serratus strength, which is gonna help my scapular control. So this one is really nice to keep up, like pump up the tires of your serrated strength, pushing it into protraction so you know you're working on that, which helps with permanent control of winging, okay? Helps with it, gets the strength up. But when you do it in that weight-bearing position, that closed chain weight-bearing position, my whole rotator cuff is working on that ball in the socket, okay? Especially when it's vulnerable, when it's way out press forward, which is in sort of like that press forward position, okay? I'm sort of basically stimulated to turn on. The balance work stimulates it. So if you're gonna do a one exercise, or the first exercise involving serratus and scapular work, do it with a ball, which lights up your rotator cuff, and that gives you an isometric work done, which then leads into doing some dynamic work with your calf, so that would be the first one, not my number one, just the first one of four. Second one I'd work on is actually getting some range in your rotator cuff, or range in your shoulder joint. So to be able to externally rotate, which we'll come to, you need the range. So if you've lost range, for say from a tendinopathy, an old one, maybe some old frozen shoulder, maybe some surgery, maybe you just got some joint restriction because you haven't used it much. When you come back into here, if you don't have the range, you're only going to get strong from here to here. You need that range, you know, that plus sort of five or 10 degrees past zero there, or past what we call 90 degrees if you like. So to help you with that, again, another double whammy. This one is your internal rotation. So yes, working on subscap, but, which is, you know, important for your rotator cuff. So you're killing, you know, more than just your super smart but you're actually working on other parts of your rotator cuff, which is helpful. So this one, again, is one of your probably biggest bangs for your buck for range plus strength. So when you rotate forward, there's your rotator cuff strength in an internal direction, which is biasing your subscap, which you need for pressing. The control work here is what you're going for. And then you get your range because you're trying to, you're holding on but then letting go to get the range and then coming forward. So the beautiful thing about this is it's a combination between range of movement, stretching, mobility work, and strength. And again, especially good for those sort of people who've had previous dislocations, previous shoulder, shoot, shoulder surgeries where they're so restricted back there, they need the range to be able to push overhead or play sport, that sort of thing. So this is an absolute must, especially for me, because it clears off any of the tightness I get that's creeping into the shoulder joint, say if you haven't trained for a week or something like that, you start getting a little bit tight if you had a previous injury or surgery. So this one just nails it. And you'll find that this is an awesome little segue into your external rotation. Because like I said, it gets your range better, fires it up, preps it up, so then you can do your external rotation. So then you come to your external rotation. Now, 
Again, external rotation, what you can do, you can do different forms of external rotation. You can do it down here, up here. I like doing it at 45 degrees. Now the reason I like doing that is because when you're up at 90 degrees, well, if I go this way, up at 90 degrees, you're working on your ability to go backwards there, okay? But you're sort of keeping it at a certain angle like that. And that's harder, perhaps, if you've got some impingement. And we usually keep people down here if they've got some impingement. But I find, if I go at 45 degrees, I find it's a lot harder to keep your elbow in one spot. So when I'm working on my external rotation strength, okay, I'm also having to try and keep this elbow in one spot. So when I start off with this point, I'm making sure I'm not facing the band that way. I'm 45 degrees. I've got my arm out sort of roughly around 45 degrees, but my elbow stays at 90, and then I haul it backwards as far as I can go. So if you imagine, if I hadn't worked on my external rotation range with that previous exercise, I wouldn't be able to get very far back. So this is very important that you do the exercise first and then go for the range when you go backwards, okay? So this one here, I'm doing a 45 degree external rotation. Again, great thing about that is you're working on you know, your external rotators, you've got your teres minor, you've got your infraspinatus, but you're also working on your supraspinatus because you're holding it out there in abduction. You've almost got a some dynamic but a lot of isometric work for that supraspinatus holding it out there. So the ability to hold it out there is gonna be really important. If I go up to sort of 90 degrees, go this way, I've got, I feel like I've got more, a lot more delt going on. This, this is a little bit harder than this position here because in this position, that supraspinatus is shortened. So it's in a strong position. In here, it's more in a lengthened position, all right? So it's harder work, it's in a mid-range it's probably a little bit more vulnerable. So I find my favorite 45 degrees rather than 90. It doesn't mean you don't do 90, it's just that my, at this point of where my strengthening regime is, 45 is the best for me. Now the last one is your scaption. Now scaption, I find, gives me that sort of long lever work, which you need in life, okay? It stops me doing heaps and heaps of lateral raises and heaps and heaps of front raises, okay, which I don't really like for shoulders in general, for tendons, because remember, we're working on rotator cuffs. There's no point doing heavy lateral raises or heavy front raises for rotator cuff. That's for muscle development of deltoids. And stuff. We're talking about rotator cuffs, so I don't like those ones for that. What I like is a very slow scaption angle. And the reason why we do scaption angle is because that's where, if I face you this way, it's not straight out in front of me. It's not 90 degrees. It's about 30 to 40 degrees around here. It varies from person to person. So I'm going sort of from my hip outwards in this degree here. Imagine like if that was a clock, it'd be about 10 o'clock, okay? So up in this direction here, and I only need to go about 120 degrees up, okay? So that's 30 degrees above 90. So this is two kilos. Now you may find that, well, that's pretty light. But if you're doing two kilos slow enough, pausing at the top for an isometric, and then slowly coming down, like a quite a slow movement, that could be four or five seconds, you'll find that the two kilos, because it's time under tension, is enough. Maybe you go to three, you probably don't need to go to four. So not too fast on the way up, and then really slow on the way down. So you've got some long time under tension, you've also got some time to control that shoulder weight, so you can have your finger round the back and see what that shoulder weight is doing. Make sure it's doing behaving itself from the first sort of zero to 60 degrees, and then making sure it lifts away when you get above, and then coming down, and then hitting your finger again when you get down to that 60 degrees, and then staying there and not crashing in. So again, you can work on two things here. Tin strength for your supraspinatus, scapular control work, when you're going through that abduction phase. So if you wanted my top four, well there's my favorite top four. And you'll notice with each one of those, they've got more than one benefit. I hope that helps for your rotator cuff. See you next time.